Hey guys, B Junior here from B Junior's Movie Cave on the Endurance Productions YouTube channel. Get my water there. Um, what I want to do today is just a quick overview, post viewing thoughts on Maniac 2012, the remake of the old cult favorite film Mani by the same title, Maniac, um, that starred Joe Spinell and directed by William Lustig. I took in a uh, preview screening of it at the recent horror convention in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Mad Monster Party on Friday night, 8 o'clock. The screening room was packed. It was standing room only when I went in there. And let me just say, I'll just take you through it. There's not going to be any spoilers in this one. This is going to be spoiler-free video. It's just going to be a brief overview. Uh, so don't worry about me giving away the story in any way um, or any of the good stuff that was in it. Um, I guess the word I should lead off with was surprising. The movie was surprising to me. Um, I don't want to give away any spoilers, and the reason why is because I want you guys, I don't want to attempt to sway you one way or the other. I want This is going to be a film that I want folks to make up their own minds on. I want you to draw your own conclusion, rather. Um, it was just like any other remake. Whenever I heard it was going to be screened at the uh, Mad Monster Party and saw it on the schedule, I was like, well, I started jumped at it, and I was like, well, it's just going to be another rehash, another remake. I'm always very leery. You guys know me by now. I'm very leery about any remake of an old fan favorite of mine or any old classic or favorite film. But I stopped and thought for a second, even before whenever I went to see it, um, Maniac itself, the 1980 film. You know, films like that, the original Evil Dead, and I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes when I say this. I say this in the most respectful manner because those are two of my favorites. You know, I love these old movies. I grew up with them. The thing about it is, um, old cult favorites like Maniac that didn't really spawn any sequels or anything of that nature, I think in just my humble opinion, lend themselves to at least trying a remake on because a couple of different reasons. One, nobody in the mainstream really knows about the film unless you're a horror nut you know, out there that watches all these slashers and stuff. Two, nine times out of ten, uh, even the creators themselves, uh, you know, the director or producers, whoever, might want to try to redo it. I mean, they even did that with the Evil Dead series, because look at Evil Dead 2. It's basically a bigger budget remake uh, of the first film. And even Army of Darkness, to some degree, is a remake of Evil Dead 2, a continuation of the story, in a way, if you just stop and look at it. But anyway, that's off my tangent. What I'm saying is older cult films tend to lend themselves a little bit, not to say they're done better in most cases. In most cases, they're not. Remakes are usually pretty much crap, you know. But uh, Maniac, just for some reason, I thought lent itself to at least trying, you know, trying it out, see if it, see if it fits, really. So I went to the screening at 8 o'clock, and as I said before, the screening room was packed. The biggest thing on my mind, I'm sitting there thinking, ah, oh, this is going to be another rehash. They got a Hobbit to play the uh, character of Frank Zito. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, they're trying to do some kind of uh, French-style 80s throwback music. They're supposed to be doing like a point of view thing with Frank Zito character or Frank's character. And I was sitting there thinking, how in the world are they going to do that? That's going to be the most boring thing ever after a while, just watching it straight through his eyes the whole time. Well, they do and they don't. I'm not going to give it away, but they, uh, they do work in some scenes where... I'm not going to tell you about the scenes, but it's not all point of view. I'll just say it that way. Um, where you do get uh, a good mix of everything to where you don't feel so claustrophobic to the point where it's annoying. Um, overall, surprising experience. I came away from there thinking, you know, wasn't half bad, but I still want to see the film. I think it's going to be released on Blu-ray in May, and it's going to do a limited theatrical release beforehand, I think. Um... Basically, I'm, I'm looking forward to probably picking it up, renting it, renting it again, and taking in a good in-depth viewing again because I don't like to form my opinion until I've seen a movie probably about two, three good times. Usually I can tell right off the bat if it's crap. And this movie's not crap, in my opinion. It's definitely worth a look-see. Especially, but even if you don't, if you, even if you've never seen the original Maniac, I would take time to go back and see that one because it's a good old slasher favorite. The thing is, you got to think about these new generations. They're going to want to see whatever's current and new out there. So even if they don't know about the old one, this one's probably still going to be an effective slasher in and around the genre. Now, will this thing go mainstream, go across the, you know, be in every movie theater? No. I'm already going to tell you it's not going to go 
And it's not going to be in your local movie theater because they're going to lose money if they do that. I'm just telling you straight. This is right up a horror nuts alley, especially if you like slasher films, because at least give it a try. You know, it's 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 going to have a feel like your early 80s slashers. It's got a very awesome uh, uh, music score and music selections in the movie. The soundtrack is awesome. I'm just going to say it. It's like a they took the instrumental synthesizers and stuff of the movie Drive, you know, some of that kind of music, uh, and uh, mixed it with some John Carpenter S cues from back in the day. Even there was a cue in there that sounded kind of like the Candyman uh, intro music, stuff like that. Um, you know, just the score is awesome. That's hands down. Soundtrack, they did an excellent job with that. The uh, look and feel of the film, they still work in that grimy feel, that look, that really dirty feel. They did relocate it to Los Angeles instead of New York. I was very apprehensive about that too, but it worked. Um, the uh, kills in the movie, there's good gore. I'm not going to tell you about the kills or anything. There's good gore, and I, I kind of liked how they tried to do something different with the point of view stuff with Elijah Wood. You, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say anything you don't already know. If you, are, if you read up on this movie, you know it's mostly point of view, and you're not going to see Elijah Wood the whole time. You'll see him in reflections, things of that nature in the mirror, dream sequences like the like the original had. The original even had dream sequences, hallucinations. Frank's crazy. I mean, he's just a crazy dude. Um, it doesn't go down the whole origin story road, but it does flesh out the origin a little bit more. Um, kind of wish they wouldn't have done that, but at the same time, they don't dwell on it like uh, the Halloween remake where it's like the whole first half of the film. They don't do that kind of thing, so they don't. You know, don't get your hairs up about that. Um, still pretty good uh, overall feeling. Like I say, I want to see it again. Gore was good. Um, minimal CGI is mostly all practical, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. There's probably some CGI in there. It's just seamless, and I didn't catch it right away. That's why I want to see it again. Um, Elijah Wood as Frank. Frank, there again, want to see it again. But I thought, in my humble, just post-viewing thoughts opinion, he did an okay job, but I think it's due in part to you don't see him that much. You just kind of hear him a lot, and you see his hands a lot. They got the greasy, grimy factor in there, too, so it it's good. I mean, it's it's not the greatest film I've ever seen. It's just something I think I'm going to want to revisit and check out again. And if I feel like it's still holding up the second or third time around or second good viewing here at the house... May have to invest in it, but I'm going to wait until then. So, I know this has been kind of a real brief overview. I don't know if it makes you want to go see it or not. I'd say B Junior's, you know, I'm not going to give it my seal of approval, but I'm going to say as far as remakes go, it was surprising. And when it comes out, winter or however, you need to see it. If you're a slasher fan of the old school slashers, you may want to give it a try. At least give it a try. Not going to say it's altogether better than the original. The original, I just watched it the other day, uh, yesterday as a matter of fact, because I just got that nostalgia feeling for Maniac. Popped it in, watched it while I was doing other stuff, and I just, it's still a great film. It's just that this one's, it pays homage to the original without saying F you to the original, if, if you take my meaning. It's not like a big F you like Halloween was or, you know, anything like that. It's basically, it's basically a, pays homage there's a couple of scenes where you're going to sit there and say that's a written you know that's a homage moment that's all so see what i mean anyway guys this is a brief overview of the maniac uh, remake 2000 it was made in 2012 it's just now hitting the circuit it'll more or less uh, go to straight to video or straight to blu-ray um, with a limited theatrical release be my best guess so i just the this this version we saw at the the con was definitely a uh I heard tell from a couple of different people that it was the unrated or directors. It was just the unrated cut. It wasn't an R-rated version. It was unrated. So there's some good gore in there. I mean, it, it really, it holds on it too. It doesn't just flash and go away. I mean, it really shows it to you right in front of the, right in front of your face. So some good, it didn't have a whole lot of hammy one-liners in it and stuff like that either. I mean, it had some, it had a good funny moment with a, opportune moment with one of the one of the first kills in the movie um a very choice piece of music was uh chosen that the uh, little girl puts on before the the, kid, the whole sequence starts i'm not gonna tell you what it was but you'll know it right away because the whole entire screening room just busted out laughing 
and it had us laughing for like two minutes. I mean, it was just like straight laughing. So anyway, guys, I say check it out, see if it's your cup of tea, but I'm not going to try to sway you one way or the other because I myself am not totally on board yet, but I want to see it again, maybe on a good Blu-ray transfer. Rock on, dudes. I'll catch you next time. Bye.